And by the way, this is the feng shui compass eh, of the current land. So I'm a bit uh, cultured. Uh, I believe in all this. And later on, uh, this is where we talk about their country, their city. And the city and the country that I identify in the uh, uh, first, uh, uh, the, the choices that I have in mind was actually Malaysia and Thailand. So naturally, Malaysia is our kin and is very near and we have almost the same culture. So um, I decided to do a farm there. But somehow, I very much inclined towards the Thai culture and my, my feeling for, for the country is much deeper than Malaysia. And I got a lot of uh, friends there because of my past work, working experience. And I set my mind to do it in Thailand, even though I don't speak the language. So what I did was um, I start hunting for a piece of land. So the cheapest land would be away from the popular city like Bangkok, you know, the Korat side, uh, all those uh, agriculture places. And Phuket was never in my mind, honestly. Yeah? Because why? Uh, first, my, my Thai friend says that people don't, don't build farm in Phuket. Uh. They build condo, they build hotel, they build all this for the, for the overseas uh, tourists. So, um, but so happened, my friend got a piece of land. I popped the question. She says, okay, I, I rent it to you. And then I did my sum. I felt that, okay, six months is good to go. And I, I, I got it. I got hold of this piece of land that you saw in the video. And I start my journey uh, early January. Um, that time, I only have, I, I don't have much money, honestly. So my children supported the daddy by giving me some to boost up my, my motivation, my enthusiasm. So I went in and then this is going to last me for six months. And while I'm doing that, I start to look for partners and investors. And fortunately, and also I'm blessed that my partners who follow me through Facebook, actually Facebook is very useful, right? If it's not because of farm, I will not use Facebook because I find, it's, I find that Facebook is a bit intrusive. But for the farm, I think it's very useful. So my, my the partners who follow me through the journey and talk to me, and they felt that uh, they shared a vision, they came on board, all right? They came on board. And that is the very, the six months become more months, uh, all right? And identify the country is very important because you need to be very sure you are comfortable with the place that you're going to set your farm, okay? I'm very comfortable with Thailand culture. I'm very comfortable with the people. I'm very comfortable with the food. And I'm also very comfortable with the standard of living and the cost. So these are the factors I consider. And next, city. Uh, city, standard of living very high. Things are cheap. Just like Singapore, they import uh, things from Bangkok and all over the place. But still okay, all right? So country and city, very important. Ah, this is very important. Eh? I share with you uh, what I mean by that. You need to immerse and accept the culture. And, the, and, and this culture thing is very funny thing. Um, when, when, I, when I work in Indonesia, um, my, my friend once told me, eh, before you work in Indonesia, let me advise you that please accept the culture. Don't bring Singapore working ethic culture into the country because they will not accept it. At first, I thought he was telling me lies, but later I realized it's true. From, uh, from a, a few staff, uh, he ended up that I become a sole prop, working alone, because I brought in the Singapore ethic, working culture ethic. Uh. So uh, this, this stuck in my mind for a long time. So when I went there, I make sure I do not impose we think we know best kind of attitude onto the worker. It doesn't work. So first, that is the reason why whenever uh, we build a new piece of land, we will follow the culture by blessing the land. You can see that the, the slides, the, the video there, we bless the land, okay? Uh, nothing to do with religion, but it's just that um, you bless the land, you are showing respect to the people of the country, 
right? Uh, and when they see that a foreigner are following the standard SOP, they respect you more, right? And the guys beside me is actually Peter. He's a Myanmar miss. I tell you, when it comes to communication culture, it's very funny. Okay, let me give you a very, very good example, a very comical one. You know, lately I've been here, he's there, so he showed me some Ling Tzu bag. Uh. Then I, I asked him, hey Peter, how long is this bag? Okay. Um, how, long it, uh, how long it takes to, you know, I mentioned about the length of the bag. So she thought I asked him how long is to we uh, produce the bag. So he tell me, okay, today we produce this bag at this date, blah, 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 blah. You know? So when it comes to communication, it can be a culture shock as well. So we got to be patient and we got to, um, got to follow them in line to let them understand what we want to tell them to do, right? And just to share a little bit of, their, of these people from uh, Myanmar. Myanmar is a very big country. Eh? He come from Dawe. Dawe is a city whereby I was told by the Thai people, they are very smart. They are smart people who don't talk, they observe, and they are stubborn, okay? And they, they have a certain level of integrity and loyalty, yeah? uh, to, be, uh, to assure you on that. So if you do work uh, uh, in other country and you have opportunity to employ Myanmar Miss, make sure you ask them, are you from Dawei? If you are from Dawei, 90% you are safer. So do I tell team and neck at him to follow my way in this manner, which I don't think it will work, but what do I do to follow my way of getting it organized and, and proper so that we do not uh, uh, mess up our production and they are quite untidy when they come to work. So what do I do? I work together with him side by side and show him. So I use action to speak to him and which at the side of my eyes, I look at him He's observing, okay? And that is the reason why even I'm here and he's there, I have a peace of mind. I my partners have a peace of mind because he is just a replica of what I will be doing over there, you see? So in order to overcome uh, communication culture, it's not by words because by words, you can become naggy. Eh? And then when you become naggy, nobody listens. So that is my experience anyway and I use by action. So when you work hand in hand with them, you show them, they learn. And they learn even better and faster, right? Okay, the next scene that we, we want to talk about is who are your team members and supporters? To work alone in a foreign land and, um, and can't find someone to speak your own language can be very lonely at times. Eh? Okay, right, uh, Vivian, you're laughing. Can be very lonely at times. And you only can talk to yourself from the reflection of the mirror. Okay, and I don't have the dog yet. Eh? So you will be myself, the, the, the farm, the house, and stray cat running around, and occasionally stray dog zoom past the farm. You know that kind of thing? So uh, when the going is, is against you, it can be a bit a down, but the best way to overcome it is to work. Don't sit, it's to work. Be busy, be proactive, but don't be hardworking, but for no result, but be smart and hard work. Okay? And I'm glad to say that I got partners, eh? although they, are, they have their own full-time job, they are contributing at their own personal capacity with their own ability. So I always look out for partners who can contribute uh, in their strength, based on their strength. For example, I got a partner who comes from the IT. He's, he's a director. Okay, so she take care of the communication part. And I have a partner who is from social media. Well, I'll tell you that one. Well, because of this uh, digital thing, it's very important. We take care of our media part. And I have a partner who is, a, I'm not sure is she a professor or not, but she's very good at lab. She's a scientist kind of thing. So any te thing technical, bombastic word or any equipment, I'll go to her. So at least uh, I'm covered 
I will not be hijacked by some vendors or anything. No? Uh, so we, I'm constantly looking for partners who can play a different role altogether. Okay? So partners who can play a role and can, um, can relieve um, and give you uh, inner strength is very important. Okay? And if you do have volunteers, uh, which you think you, you want volunteers, it's also good. From where I come from, which is Phuket, wow, we will not have short of volunteers. Uh. You just blast in the Phalang group. Phalang means the Westerner group. I tell you, this uh, Westerner, they, they will be very happy to come and volunteer. But uh, just a bit of a uh, sidetrack. Uh. We will be working with a, a Pacific uh, Westerner group who are doing sustainability uh, in Phuket on a very large scale. So I just got in touch with them and they love what we do because we do have a be a sponsor program whereby kind-hearted uh, Singaporean, local or even foreigner, they injected some money to help needy family in the city that we set up a farm. So there's something that we also got to bear in mind. The place that you, you, um, you grow your business, you make money from, it's always good to look after the community around them, around you, right? Uh, so we do have this program where we help the family that need help to grow mushroom and to make money by selling the mushroom and to be sustainable, okay? So team members, supporters, all this um, important because these are all the uh, moral support that you need to have. And these are all the positive energy and vibes occasionally you need to inject yourself with to keep you going. Okay? So, but again, it still comes down to yourself to stir the ship towards the vision that you have. All right? I always love um, this phrase, uh, just do it and it shall be done. Um, why, I can't speak for all, but I speak for myself. Eh? When I see something that I believe in so much and, and, and that even though it has not happened, to me, it has already happened. Just that, not physically, but it has been in my mind. So I see it clearly, which is what we call the vision. I will go for it. I might not be 100% correct. I can't be 100% right. And we will not find out until you do it, right? So I do it. When I started to do it, my but and the if and whatever not, it will no longer be in my vocabulary. Because we are always affected by our two sides of ourselves. One is, okay, let's go and do it. The other one is, are you sure? Okay, I am 57 years old. I mean, I can reveal my age. Age to me is just a number. I am 57. So when I started this at 56, uh, you know what my friend said, told me? I mean, I, I believe you know the answer. Uh. Hey, hello, 55, already take your CPI. Go to the coffee shop and shake leg and drink and talk and spend your time there, you know, that kind of thing. In short, uh, you're almost there, almost there. Your, your lifespan is almost there. I don't, I don't, I don't bother, uh, right? If I don't do it, I'll regret for the rest of my life. This is my second journey. This is my second beautiful journey. Okay? The first journey was because of survival. Money, money, money. Until I, I hate it so much. But this second phase, we still need money. Eh? Because love alone cannot sustain you. Eh? Okay, please. L-O-V-E. Eh? It cannot feed you. It cannot bring you what you need to bring. need to survive. Eh? So we need to be sustainable. But because I love first, okay, I will pursue my dream much further and I can sustain even much longer, right? So this is a very powerful phase to me, statement to me. Just do it and it shall be done. No, no if, no but. As long as you don't, don't go and do stupid things, don't go and harm people, don't go and scam people. Why can't you do it, right? Uh, okay, guys, that's the end of my story. So, um, okay, thank you for your time, sir.